Hello everyone, this is TechTribe and in today's tutorial we'll be discussing how to write a good Stack Overflow question. When I was just getting into programming a few years ago, I had to frequently use this website. I still do it now. However, I noticed that some of my initial questions were being downvoted. And it took me a while to figure out how to write a good question, so I'll be sharing some tips with you today. If you look at the top questions for today, you can see that some of them have been downvoted. And this is usually due to some common reasons, which I'll cover today. First, let's look at my profile. I'm by no means an expert on this, but I think I've learned a few things over the years. So if you look at my questions and sort them based on votes, you can see some of them have been upvoted like four times, two times. But if you scroll down and go to the third page, you'll see that some of mine have received downvotes as well. So my first tip is to do your research and avoid duplicates. Questions can be close if the answer can be found somewhere else and your rating will be significantly impacted. Fortunately, Stack Overflow makes it easy to know whether or not your question has already been asked. If you ask a question and you enter a title like how to center a div in HTML, so then if you click next, you'll see some questions that look similar. And most of these questions say like how to center div and is it possible to center div with absolute parent? So it's very likely that your question already has an answer somewhere else. So if we go to Google and enter this question, we also find a lot of information that's probably very useful and will help anyone resolve their problem, like HTML div align, how to center div tag, and even if we go to page 5 of Google, we see that all of these answers are also very relevant to your question. Thus, that would not be a good question to ask on Stack Overflow. Here's an example of a question that was marked as a duplicate, and although the poster got a lot of upvotes, this question is ultimately detrimental to the Stack Overflow platform because it takes up space when the answer is already found somewhere else. Also make sure to check your spelling and grammar. Here the user spelled horizontally incorrectly. Another important strategy is to be specific and ask an actual question. So something like JavaScript problem is not a question. The best way to demonstrate this is through an example. So here's the usual form where you ask a question. So first we need to come up with a title. Again, it has to be a question and it should be specific. A question likely has answers in other places. However, this is for demonstration purposes only. You should do your research and only post a question if you cannot find the answer anywhere else. So my question is, why is my CSS border applied to all divs not appearing? First of all, you'll notice that it's an actual question, and also it's very specific. It says CSS border, so we know what programming language we're working in, and we kind of know the context as well. Next, we need to write a description or an overview to provide more context for the people who will be answering this question. We'll just describe my problem in a few specific sentences. So I'll say, I'm trying to apply a green dotted 5 pixel border to all div elements on the page. For some reason, none of the borders are appearing. Here's a small formatting tip. When you want to emphasize a word, like a certain programming keyword, you should put backticks around it. So here I'll put backticks around divs to emphasize it that it's an actual element on the page. Next, I'll tell the reader that I'll be posting some code below. After pasting sample code, you'll see that it's very poorly formatted and this is not the way to go. Uh, the Stack Overflow platform actually warns you of it. So I'll delete all the spaces, then I'll select everything and click Control K. This will indent it properly so that it shows up normally at the bottom. I'll indent the borderline so that it looks more visually pleasing. Including a few lines of code is often a good idea because it will help the people answering the question debug your code. However, try your best not to add any unnecessary code because it just confuses the reader. And also I made a little mistake, it's actually a green dotted 10 pixel border. Next, we have to insert relevant tags so that people can find your question. So let's look at the JavaScript tag. Is this a good tag to include? Well, our website might have JavaScript, but that has nothing to do with the question we're asking. Our question is purely CSS. Therefore, we should not include the JavaScript tag. Next, let's type in CSS. We have the option of including the CSS3 tag, but that has to do with the third edition of Cascading Style Sheets, and our problem is very general. So we'll just go for the basic CSS tag. Also, we can include a more specific tag like border because our problem has to do with adding a border to an element. So we'll just choose the border tag right here. Other questions, you might need more tags, but for this question, two should be sufficient. For more complex or visual questions, you might want to include a JS bin demonstration. For my hypothetical example, I included two divs and there's a red one and there's a blue one. The three lines of code at the bottom are the ones that we're interested in. So after making this demonstration, we should get a link in order to share it. So we'll go to the top left and click the share button. We'll copy the link and switch back to the Stack Overflow tab. Below my code, I'll write something like JS bin for my website. I know people who would probably add a colon here and then just paste their link, but please do not do that. That does not look visually pleasing and is very unprofessional. Instead, we'll highlight the word JS bin and hyperlink it using the feature on the top. So uh, this will be this hyperlink. And then here we'll paste in our link and click add link. 
Now if you look at the preview at the bottom, we can see that we have successfully hyperlinked the word. We now have a complete question with a decently written title, a good description, a little bit of code, and also a JSBin demonstration. Another useful thing we could do is put a comment on JSBin where the problem occurs. So right above the line that says border green dot at 10 pixels, I can put here is the problem. This will help other programmers find the line of code. And you probably have noticed, but the word dotted was spelled incorrectly. So if I put in the extra T, that fixes the problem. Fortunately, Stack Overflow has a guided mode, which will help you avoid many of these problems. So if I click the guided mode, first I have to identify what type of question I have. If I'm in need of a hardware recommendation, Stack Overflow will actually send me to a different website because Stack Overflow is not meant for hardware recommendations. However, if I have a question about some code like I just did now, I can click that box and then click next, and then I'll actually be able to continue using the platform. On the next page, we see some useful information about tags as well as titles. And then after that, we see some similar questions to ensure that we are not writing a duplicate. Here we have space to write a description that we have already written before. And then if you go to the next page, we have the ability to finally post the question. I hope that you found my tips and example useful. Please subscribe to TechTribe for more tutorials.